Hello, in this video we're going to look at headaches, uh, the main types of headaches and then treatment as well. So headaches can be divided into two main types. We have primary headaches and we have secondary headaches. Secondary headaches are pretty bad. So these, these, are, um, these are your red flag headaches. Um, and we'll talk about secondary headaches uh, towards the end of this video, but we will firstly look at primary headaches. And primary headaches are your the main, the most common types of headaches um, that is that are encountered by the general population. So here I'm drawing this person with a headache. And there are many types of primary headaches. Um, a very common type is one that affects one side of the face, so unilateral and sort of um, upper half, and these uh, are your, and this is known as the migraine headache. Then you have tension headache, which is sort of uh, feels like a tight tightness around your forehead. You have the cluster headache, which is sort of around your eye orbit area, um, and then you have sinus headache, which is related uh, when you have sinusitis or irritation of your sinus, and then you have hormonal headache, which is a result of sort of uh, your horm hormonal levels changing. So let's talk about each of these types of headaches in a bit more detail, beginning with migraine. So migraine is a disorder of recurrent attack, so it comes and goes. The location of migraine is mostly unilateral, 70%. The characteristic of the headache, it's gradual onset, crescendo pattern, uh, which is basically increasing in intensity, sort of, um, and, and, and frequency. Um, with moderate to severe in, uh, intensity, so the pain. Duration of the headache is uh, between you know, 4 to 72 hours roughly. Associated symptoms include nausea, vomiting, photophobia, phonophobia, and also aura. Aura is sort of the feeling of you know, something about to happen, which is the intense headache. Then you have the tension headache. Now, tension headache, you can think of it as being more muscular. So it's the most ubiquitous headache and is the most common reason um, why um, over-the-counter analgesics are actually bought. Um, so these are your, the most common, this is the most common headache, essentially. The location um, of tension headaches are usually bilateral and around the forehead area. Uh, the characteristic, it's pressure or tightness, like a band, which waxes and wanes. The duration is variable, and associated symptoms, uh, usually none. Then you have the cluster headache. Now, cluster headaches are pretty painful. Um, cluster headaches are a group of idiopathic headaches that is uh, associated also with trigeminal neuralgia. Now, trigeminal what I mean by that is trigeminal is, is a nerve, trigeminal nerve, and it's a, it's, a, it's a very important cranial nerve that does, does many things around your face, essentially. Now, the location of the cluster headaches is uh, always unilateral, and it's usually around the eye. So it's one-sided around the eye. The characteristic of a cluster headache, the pain begins quickly. It's deep, continuous pain, excruciating and explosive. In, um, in quality. The duration, it's, it's pretty quick in, in respect to the other headaches we talked about, 30 to 3 hours. And the associated symptoms um, are essentially the symptoms of the trigeminal nerve problem as well as some other nerve problems. So just drawing it out, here I'm drawing a face. Now we have to quickly uh, just understand what the trigeminal nerve does in order to understand the symptoms associated with the cluster headache. So the trigeminal nerve, it has sense, it's, it's important for sensation around your face. It senses an area around your forehead, which is supplied by the ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal. Then you have the maxillary branch of the trigeminal, V2, which supplies sort of the nose area. And then you have the um, mandibular branch, which is V3, which supplies sort of the bottom area of your face. So that's the sensation, so the trigeminal nerve um, sort of is responsible for sensation around your face. And these are its branches, three branches. So in cluster headache, you have pain in this area in blue here around the eye. And the associated symptoms 
include Horner's, uh, Horner's syndrome, which you have ptosis and meiosis. So ptosis is drooping of the eyelid and meiosis is a constriction. So you're unable to dilate your pupils. You can also have lacrimation and also nasal discharge. So essentially what I'm trying to portray here is that the cluster headache, you can have some associated symptoms involving the trigeminal nerve and sort of uh, other nerve uh, problems there, neur neuralgia problems. Hope that made sense. Then you have sinus headaches, which is associated with sinusitis. You, then you have hormonal headaches as well. And hormonal headaches, um, essentially it's when the changes of your hormone levels causes the headache. So it can be associated with low estrogen concentration uh, for example, at the beginning of the menstrual cycle or withdrawal, withdrawal of hormone therapy. So all of a sudden you have estrogen one minute and then you take away the hormonal therapy, estrogen levels drop, you get this headache. So those were the five types of headaches. Uh, primary headaches, migraine, um, tension, cluster, sinus, and hormonal. Now let us look at the drugs used, the common or main drugs used to treat each of these headaches, beginning with the migraine. So for migraines, which is recurrent, um, NSAIDs or aspirin plus antiemetics and hydration is important. So antiemetics are drugs that stop vomiting. For tension headaches, simple anal uh, analgesics. So this is paracetamol. And again, it's the most common um, tension headache is the most common reason, I guess, why people, one of the common reasons why people buy over-the-counter paracetamol. For cluster headaches, subcutaneous sumatriptan or oxygen can be given, um, and this is to prevent vomiting in general. Uh, triptans, which includes sumatriptan, are actually contraindicated in certain, patient, in certain patient, patients with cardio, uh, coronary artery disease, peripheral vascular disease, or cerebrovascular disease. For sinus headaches, um, supportive therapy is important, analgesics, antiemetics, anti and also you can prescribe, uh, you can give um, antibiotics uh, depending on the cause of the sinusitis. So I hope you, I hope you understand, I hope that may, I hope that was clear, the different types of primary headaches as well as just the general management. Now let's look at secondary headaches, which as I mentioned earlier are, are serious and dangerous. Secondary headaches are a result of serious underlying diseases or other conditions. So we have some warning signs and symptoms for secondary headaches, and we can remember this by the acronym SNOOP, S-N-O-O-P. S stands for systemic um, symptoms, illness, or condition, such as cancer. N is for neurological symptoms um, or abnormal signs. Um, o is for onset, which is new, um, age greater than 40, or it's sudden, such as when you have a thunderclap sort of feeling, which is a subarachnoid hemorrhage, essentially. The other O is for other associated conditions or features. Um, P is for previous headache history uh, with headache progression or change in attack character. So essentially what Snoop is trying to say is that, um, you know, the headache that the person presents with is very abnormal and it's got all these signs and symptoms which will tell you hang on a second this is not normal there's a there's this is this is a more serious problem this is more serious than a tension headache or a migraine so let's look at some examples so here i am drawing a person who has a, a very serious headache so examples of secondary headaches include intracranial hemorrhage and this can this can include subdural, epidural, or subarachnoid hemorrhage. And of course, these, these people, they, they can present with some, some neurological problems, uh, as well as um, some, you know, some complaining of thunderclap, essentially, that, that the onset was thunderclap. Then you can have uh, another example is giant cell um, arthritis, which also is known as tem temporal arthritis, which is essentially the temporal artery which, that is inflamed on the side of your head. The final example of a secondary headache is an internal carotid dissection. So in summary, we looked at headaches, which can be primary or secondary. Primary include migraine, tension, cluster, sinus, 
um, and hormonal, and secondary are your dangerous ones. And um, we, it's a, it's 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 a result of an underlying condition um, that is more serious. And we can we can uh, pick this up with the acronym SNOOP, which helps us sort of identify if if it's more serious or not. Um, and yeah. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Bye.